So I'm here to uh, talk about the oceans. I, as Brian said, I'm a physical oceanographer. That means I study how the ocean moves around, what drives the ocean currents, and what impact the oceans have on our climate system. So I'll start by, you know, what has happened to the oceans? Well, the oceans, uh, as well as much of the rest of the climate system, have warmed. This, uh, everything that's in red in this figure has warmed over the last, between 1971 and 2010. So you can see there's warming almost everywhere, but not absolutely everywhere in the oceans. A few small regions of cooling over those 40 years. And the lower plot shows the average if you just went around by latitude circles. And you can see and shows how that warming is penetrating deep into the ocean. And that's really critical for the sea level rise uh, question. What you may not realize is that when we talk about global warming, in a real sense, we mean ocean warming. If you look at how the uh, different parts of the Earth's system have responded over the last 50 years, more than 90% of the extra heat that's been stored by the planet is found in the ocean. That's shown by this big blue ball. 2.3% has gone into warming up the atmosphere, a bit has gone into warming up the land surface, and the rest has gone into melting ice glaciers and ice caps, sea ice in the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. But what this means, the fact that most of the heat is in the ocean, is first of all that if we want to understand how climate change is evolving, we need to be measuring the ocean and understanding how it works. But this, these changes in the ocean can also drive other changes in the climate system, including the melting of ice. We're here uh, the scientists are here this week to mostly to talk about Antarctica and the Southern Ocean. And the Southern Ocean is a particularly important part of the oceans in terms of climate and sea level rise. And that's because it has this unique pattern of ocean currents that are shown schematically here. So this uh, layer of water called deep water is rising as you move from, you can imagine New Zealand to the left in this picture and Antarctica to the right. This water that's deep in the ocean everywhere else in the ocean, say at depths of three or four kilometers, actually rises all the way to the sea surface around the coast of Antarctica. Some of that sinks again and, and fills the bottom layers of the ocean, and that's the main way that oxygen levels are renewed in the deep oceans, through this process. The rest of the water reaches the surface and it communicates with the atmosphere, and that's important because it can pick up uh, heat from the atmosphere and pick up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And that water sinks again and spreads out through the rest of the global oceans. And as a consequence, the Southern Ocean is responsible for a lot of the heat and uh, carbon uptake by the oceans. And that, it, it is that heat and carbon uptake that determine, that is the, uh, the reason that the oceans are so influential for climate change. So the oceans as a whole take up about a third of the carbon dioxide that we emit as humans. Uh, that acts to slow the rate of climate change. It also takes up a lot of heat, and of the heat uptake by the ocean, more than half of it enters the oceans through the Southern Ocean, is absorbed at the surface of the Southern Ocean, and then pumped into the rest of the ocean by those ocean currents. So to understand the future of climate and the future of sea level rise, it's important that we understand this circulation system and how it might respond in the future. So you've seen a picture similar to this already. Ocean warming immediately causes sea level rise. So if we pump heat into the ocean, we, the uh, water expands. And as it expands, sea level rises. As Jonathan has just told you, most of the, the rise that we've seen over this century has been due to ocean warming. The second largest contribution is from the melt of glaciers. There's also a contribution from storing water on land, so building dams and retaining more water on land, for example and then the contributions from the ice sheets. They've made a, made a relatively modest contribution to the sea level rise in the past century, but as you'll hear from the other speakers, their influence is going to rise in the future. Jonathan also showed us a somewhat similar plot to this one. There are two parts to this figure that I'm showing you. The first point is that the sea is not level. We talk about sea level, but the surface of the ocean is not flat because it's in balance with the ocean current systems. So for example, the ocean immediately south of New Zealand is about one and a half meters or two meters higher than it is against the coast of Antarctica. You can't see that slope. It's two meters higher over 2,000 kilometers. But that, current, that slope is in balance with a strong ocean current that circles around Antarctica called the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. So the black lines in this figure show the mean 
surface of the, sea, of the ocean, and it reflects the circulation of the flow of the water is kind of around these black lines. So there's a big gyre here, there's another big gyre here going in the other direction, same in the Atlantic, same in the South Atlantic. And where these lines are close together, that means the sea slope is high. That's where this really big ocean current is. What's shown is in the colors is what Jonathan showed, how the sea level has changed over the last 20 years or so. And just like the pattern of the mean sea level itself, the change in sea level is also not uniform. So that change of the last 20 years, the shape of that uh, pattern, in part reflects the ocean, res ocean circulation response to changes in winds. What it means is that you know, what matters to people is how much is the sea level going to rise where I live? And that, the answer to that question depends, obviously, from this picture on where you live. Some places it'll be, it, it, it has risen faster than others, and the rate of change in the future will also vary from place to place. So warming oceans also mean less ice, but just to be clear, there's a lot of different ice that the ocean interacts with. Sea ice, which is the frozen skin of the ocean at high latitudes, formed by freezing seawater. Melting sea ice doesn't do anything to sea level, just like if you happen to leave your gin and tonic long enough for the ice to melt, it doesn't overflow because the melting of the ice doesn't change the volume in the glass. So it's the same thing with sea ice. And the picture on the right shows how much sea ice there is. There's about 19 million square uh, kilometers of sea ice in the winter around Antarctica. Melting of floating icebergs also doesn't change sea level. And floating of, melting of floating ice shelves can change sea level, but not directly. So it's also floating, so changing the uh, melting ice that's floating doesn't change the sea level. But what's important about the ice shelves in terms of sea level is that they act as a, a buttress or a, a, uh, a barrier that slows the rate at which ice flows from on top of the Antarctic continent into the ocean. And so those ice shelves are critical in maintaining the amount of ice that we have on Antarctica today. So what I mean by ice shelves is as the, uh, the ice is flowing on the continent, gradually uh, flows from the top of Antarctica down towards the coast, where it reaches the sea, it starts to float. And those floating portions around the edge of Antarctica are called the ice shelves. Those ice shelves, as I said, act as buttresses. And so if we thin the ice shelves, weaken the ice shelves, or break up the ice shelves, the consequence is that ice flows more readily from the continent into the ocean. And adding that ice to the ocean and melting it does raise sea level. Ice that was on land, once we add that to the ocean that, and melt it, that will raise sea level. So how does this work? The picture on the left is a diagram showing a, an ice shelf. So here's the ice sheet itself. This is the ice shelf where it's starting to float on the ocean. And then this shows a, uh, the red arrow is illustrating the flow of ocean heat. So when the warmer ocean out here, in the, uh, off, away from Antarctica, flows up across the continental shelf of Antarctica, it can flow beneath the ice shelf. And where it does reach the base of the ice shelf, it'll melt the ice shelf. That's something that happens all the time. That's you know, the steady state situation. One of the reasons that this is important, though, is that it, this can be an unstable situation. And what it really depends on is the shape of the bedrock underneath Antarctica. So if you look at this picture over here, in this case, the bedrock is getting deeper under the ice shelf as we move away from the coast. So as we melt in this so-called grounding line, the line that between where the ice, the line where the ice starts to float is called the grounding line. As it melts, that grounding line retreats. The ice sheet now is thicker here than it was over there. And so as it flows out, it tends to carry more mass. And as it carries more mass, it starts to thin some more. And, as, and you can end up with a, uh, a situation that just is unstable and it just continues. Once you've started it, it doesn't stop until you reach a, a place where the bedrock is sloping the other way so that it tends to stabilize the grounding line or, or pin the grounding line. So the other speakers will talk a little bit more about this. But what it means from the, the uh, perspective of the oceans and sea level is that these ice shelves are kind of the soft underbelly of the Antarctic ice sheet. And, what's, and what that soft underbelly is vulnerable to is ocean heat. And so in that sense, the ocean circulation and the ocean temperatures have a big role to play in the future of the Antarctic uh, ice sheet, and therefore the future sea level rise. 
So where are the ice shelves losing mass or not? Well, this is one picture that shows where the ice shelves are, uh, where and how the ice shelves are losing mass. So a bigger circle, these circles that are out in the water, indicate how much mass is being lost from a variety of floating ice shelves, which are all named in the small text around the outside. And you can see that the strongest loss is here in West Antarctica, as Jonathan showed. In these pie charts where it's black, it means the, the ice shelves are losing mass because they're getting melted by a warmer ocean below. In the hatched, the, uh, hatched section indicates the mass that's being lost by calving of icebergs, just breaking off chunks of the ice shelves. So there's lots of uh, loss by the ocean heat over here. There's also a surprising amount of loss due to ocean heat in East Antarctica, which is a new finding in the last couple of years. And so we'll be doing, a lot of work is going on right now to try to understand that. We'll be heading down this uh, summer, for example, to this glacier, which has a lot of black, a lot of basal melt. There hasn't been an ocean measurement near that glacier yet in the history of oceanography. So we need to go figure out exactly how this is working. So I mentioned how melting of ice shells results in loss of ice from the ice sheet. This shows a similar picture. It's got three, the three pieces of information on this uh, picture of Antarctica. The first, shown in the dark red and blue colors around the margin, if you can see them, are places indicating where the ice shells are getting thinner and where the ice shells are getting thicker. And again, there's a lot of red over here in West Antarctica. That's where the ice shells are thinning rapidly. There are a few other places where the ice shells are thinning. The gray circles on the continent itself show where, the, uh, where different parts of Antarctica, how much mass they're losing. And then the red and blue colors out in the ocean are indicating where the ocean, te what the, are indicating ocean temperatures. Red is warm and blue is cold. Warm is relatively warm. These are temperatures warmer than zero degrees or warmer zero to two degrees. And you see where the warm ocean waters abut Antarctica is where there's strong melting. And it's one of the pieces of evidence that the ocean is driving the, melt, the thinning of the ice shelves. And the thinning of, of the ice shelves is in turn contributing to loss of mass from the ice sheet. So these authors, for example, conclude that the most profound contemporary changes to the ice sheet and its contribution to sea level can be attributed to ocean thermal forcing, which is just jargon for ocean warming. How do we know what's happening under an ice shelf? It's not a very easy place to measure, and we have very few measurements. The ice shelves can be more than 1,000 meters thick. It's hard to get. You can't get a ship in there. You can't see it with a satellite. You can't use uh, many of the oceanographic tools that we use it in other places. One thing we can do is send large submarines like this uh, UK vehicle called Autosub, which flew underneath the Pine Island Glacier ice shelf. So this is a cross-section of ocean um, of the ocean between zero and 1,200 meters depth, running from the open ocean towards Antarctica and beneath the uh, ice shelf. And what this shows, the temperatures that are shown here in the colors are the amount by which the temperature is higher than the temperature that's required to melt ice at, at the depth uh, that it's at. And these red colors are up to four. So they're four degrees warmer than it's required to melt the ice at the base of this ice shelf. And that's why this ice shelf is thinning so rapidly. It's the most rapidly thinning ice shelf in Antarctica. We can also make some measurements below the ice shelves by drilling holes through them, and I think Tim might say something about that. One other way we know that this is happening is by looking at changes in the ocean. And we see that the ocean is freshening across the entire Southern Ocean. Part of that's due to changes in rainfall, and part of it's due to melting of ice. The amount of ice that's uh, melting is adding fresh water to the ocean, and that makes the ocean less salty. What this picture uh, illustrates is the impact of that input of glacial melt is being felt even at the deepest levels of the ocean. So in, in an earlier slide, I showed a, an ocean circulation schematic, a cartoon of water rising to the surface and sinking again to fill the abyssal, the bottom part of the ocean. That process is the way that the deep layers of the ocean get renewed. And there are dramatic changes that have happened over the last 40 years in that layer. And this shows one example of that. This shows a cross section from Australia to Antarctica. And in the red is light water and green is heavy, dense water. And the yellow line indicates one particular layer. That layer for the last 40 years has shrunk by about half. It used to be more than 1,000 more than meters thick. On average, it's now about 500 meters. 
So we're losing that dense water at the bottom of the ocean. And the reason we're doing that is because more fresh water is entering the ocean from the Antarctic ice sheet. So just to sum up, three simple uh, messages. The oceans have warmed, and that's caused sea levels to rise, directly by causing waters to expand as they warm up. That expansion has been the main cause of sea level rise to date, but the ice sheets will become more and more important in the future, as you'll hear in a minute. Ocean warming contributes to that loss of mass from the ice sheet, not directly by melting the ice sheet, but by melting the fringing ice shells that then allow more ice to flow off the continent and into the sea. So I'll leave it there. Thanks very much.